I don't know if you can hear the car alarm. There's a car alarm going off here. I've had to go all freaking morning without hearing a car alarm, and finally you got to hear one. My day wouldn't be complete if I didn't get to hear a goddamn car alarm going off, you know. It's some car sitting down there in front of Santorini. It's out there in the street, you know. Nobody's rushing out to look at it and see what's going on, but anyway. My day, like I say, my day wouldn't be complete without it. I want to talk to you about some things. I'm going to get started on it as soon as I come back. Hey. Hello there. I want to talk to you about a couple of things. All right, I've got some notes here and I'm going to... I don't, this is, I don't know what to call this video. I'm going to have to think of a creative name for it. Maybe I'll get Darby to help me with that. You know, in case you don't know, Darby is my uh, AI assistant. And it looks to me like I need to adjust my phone. Am I level? Does it look like I'm level? Is it that level? That looks more level. Still recording? Okay. All right. So I know that's a highlight of your day getting to see me adjust the level on my camera we're nothing but professionals here okay I got an email or actually I got a text message from somebody I got a text message a few days ago from a nice lady coming from Canada coming down here to have some dental work I don't know if she's having it done or if her husband is having it done and she asked me about you know where is a good place to stay she said she's going to get some some dental work done at Top Dental and she was going to be here for a couple or three weeks or whatever it was and I remember I recommended to her that there's I, I know right off the top of my head I can think of three places to stay if you're here for just two or three weeks and you need a you know a good safe place to stay and there goes the car alarm again I don't know, I may have to may have to put off doing this video and maybe I can if it doesn't bother you, it's not gonna bother me. I can I can actually filter a bunch of that out. But anyway, back to my story. I I told this lady you can stay at the Voyager Hotel, which is real close to where I live. It's in the Marseille Lago area. Get very reasonable rates. It's a nice hotel, it's small and there's good places to eat real close by. It's a less than five minute walk to the mall or she could stay at the Balandra Hotel which is same thing really it's a nice hotel that's just a few minutes from from the mall you know short taxi ride to Top Dental or you could even stay at the Oro Verde folks let me tell you something about doing dental tourism here if you're going to come here and have major dental work done that's going to cost you a few thousand dollars that you know is way overpriced in North America. So for example, my dental work in North America was $35,000, okay? I got my work done here in Monta for $9,000. Now if you just think about that for a minute, if you're going to save that much money, okay, now, I know it's different if you just don't have the money, but if you have the money, and if you're going to save that many thousands of dollars, wouldn't it be worth it to you to fly first class down here, stay in the nicest hotel, first class hotel, eat the finest food, fly first class back, you're still going to save thousands of dollars on your visit. You're going to save thousands of dollars on your dental work. Okay, doesn't that make sense? I'm not an economist. I'm not even good at math, but I can, I can sit down and pencil out. Wow, wow, see here, if I had to spend this much money for first class, and then I'm going to spend the same, this hotel is going to cost me $100 a night instead of $45 a night, or stay in a piece of shit Airbnb for twelve fifty a night. Uh, I'm going to be miserable, and it's going to be noisy, and it's going to be a horrible, unsafe place to stay, but look at all the money I'm going to save, or... I can stay in a nice neighborhood, stay in a nice hotel, pay the extra money for it, 
I'm still going to save thousands of dollars. Wow, look at this match. It's like, it's incredible. Then why wouldn't you do that? My friend, I told her, Voyager Hotel, Oro Verde, Belandra. I got another, I got an email. I'm going to read it to you. Uh, I will, I think I'm going to read it to you. It's so windy out here, I can't hardly control my paper. Uh, it's messing up my hair and everything. Yeah, here we go. Morning, Don. I hate to bug you, but I have a question about the group. Now, the group she's talking about, I started a new Facebook group here called Mata Mata B Short-Term Rentals. The whole purpose of it is it's a group, private group, Facebook group that anybody can join. If you're already a member of Monta Monta B Expats and Amigos and the Monta Monta B Property Sales and Rentals, you can you can sign up. You can be automatically approved, and I don't even have to know that you've signed up. Okay, but anyway, it's that's what it is. It's a new group that I started this week for people that want to offer short-term rentals. Okay, here in Monta, Monta and Monta B and for people that are looking for short-term rentals. So keep that in mind. If you're going to be coming here and you're going to need a place to stay, just short-term. Short-term is less than six months, okay? Then you can get join this group, Monta Monta B. I'll put a link in the, in the description. Monta Monta B short-term rentals. And just put a post in there that you're going to be looking for a place. You're going to be here at this time to this time. And more than likely, you're going to get a response from somebody that can help you. So anyway, morning, Don. I hate to bug you, but I have a question about the group. You know how you read the reviews on rental places when you rent from Airbnb or Booking.com? Question mark. Will we be allowed to make a review on the place we rented from in the group? Or just warn people of the pros and cons? What we like and what we don't like about the place. If I understand her question correctly, she wants to know if she rents a place, a short-term rental, and she found out about it from being on this group, and she found out it, and she can leave a review, can she leave a review on this group, etc., etc.? I say yes, but please be careful, okay? If it's an Airbnb and you rent it and it's a disaster like this lady had, I would be very careful about getting on any group, Facebook group in Ecuador and saying anything bad about that property. And the reason why I'm saying that is because this is a lawsuit happy country. You say something bad about anybody here and next thing you know you're being sued. Now if it's an Airbnb, feel free, knock yourself out, do it on Airbnb. Okay, but I don't think it would be wise to do it on a local Facebook group. Okay, so that's just you may not agree, you may agree or disagree. I would be very careful about that. If you come here and you stay at a place and it didn't work out for you and you want to leave a review, get in touch with me first and let me help you write that review. Okay, she went on to say, and I highlighted this. I highlighted this. We got screwed good, and I'm sure regretting not listening to you about the area we are in. The apartment was filthy after we were assured it was given a deep clean after each person moved out. That's what she was told on Airbnb's website about this particular place. Now, I remember telling her that in, in my earlier suggestion to her, I suggested that if she's coming here for dental tourism and she's going to be going to Top Dental. Top Dental is in the Barber School area. The Barber School area is a top location for a couple of hotels, uh, Mykonos, the Wyndham, the Poseidon, Riva de Mati, uh, a lot of places, uh, Monta Hosts, uh, a lot of places and they're nice places but I gotta tell you on Thursday, Friday and Saturday nights the street party noise 
in my opinion, is unbearable. It goes on and on and on. You get to hear boom, 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 ka-choo, 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 ka-choo. You know, people in their little $300 cars will park at the sidewalk, open their trunks where they got $1,500 speakers, and they will be blasting music out until all hours of the night. And from just about any of those places that I just mentioned, you will be able to hear them. Now, I told her, I said, if you're going to stay in bar skill, you better be deaf. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unless you just want to listen to loud music. It's a fact of life. There's nothing that anybody can do about it. I don't care. You can complain to City Hall. You can complain to the hotels, Poseidon, Mikado, anybody. You can bitch and cry and complain all you want to. It's going to fall on deaf ears because they don't give a damn about you. If you're going to stay here on dental tourism, you're going to stay in Barbaskill. Be prepared. You've been warned, okay? She said, after flying for five days to get here, I had to clean along with two other people yesterday so we could take our shoes off. We had to sweep the wall. Yes, sweep the walls. There was so much dirt. We asked if we could get a refund because it was too much, too dirty and too much noise, and we were told no. We asked the person we wanted to rent from, how bad is the noise? Her reply was, in quotes, not bad. There may be a birthday party or two that will have noise, and that's it. Not the case. If anybody tells you in the barber skill area that the noise, not bad. Turn around and run. Don't walk. Run away. Go the other direction. It's not worth it, folks. Unless you're just a young party goer and you like loud music booming all night long. I can't imagine coming here and having dental implant surgery, you know, and then wanting to be kept awake for two and a half, three nights in a row out of the week. It's not worth it. There are other places. Listen to me. When I tell you places to stay, you can take that to the bank, okay? You can write it down. You can carve it in granite. That It'll be places that'll be decent, quiet, clean places. Relatively quiet. I mean, it's, it is a city, okay? You are going to hear horns honking. You are going to hear car alarms like we had down here, okay? But that's just a fact of life here, okay? But in the Barberskill area, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. And the other thing I want to talk about is real estate rentals here. I did a podcast about this recently, and now I'm going to do, I want to include it in this video. I, when I put my, when I created this new rental group on Facebook, I got a reply from a couple of people. I created a rule, okay? I created a rule that said that, that your listing, if you're going to post an ad here for short-term rentals, you must post photos, okay? You must post photos, and I also stipulated that you need to post a frontal exterior photo of the place that you're going to be renting out. Well, I got some feedback from some people. I got some kickback from people saying, not a good idea. I had a hard time understanding this in the first place. Because they were saying, if you post pictures that shows the outside of the building, and then you're also posting pictures that shows the interiors, and you're showing the furniture and the appliances, it gives thieves an idea of what could be stolen from that property, and you're identifying the property by posting a picture of it. I had a hard time accepting that, and, and I kind of still do, because... I don't think very many thieves in the Monta area are going to be members of this private group. The listings in this private group are for members only. The general public can't just come in here and just start looking at properties that are for rent and seeing pictures and saying, oh, look at this nice place. Oh, look at the furniture. Let's go rob it. I'm not buying that, okay? 
But out of respect for the realtors, I, I tried to come up with some compromise, and I did. I said, okay, if you want to... If you don't want to post pictures, then fine. You go right ahead. It's your sale. It's your rental. You go ahead and do it your way. And if it doesn't work out for you, then well, let's try my way, okay? Remember, folks, I don't get paid for doing this. I, for these Facebook groups that I manage, I don't get paid squat for doing those. If anything, it's a major pain in the ass, and it's a major disruption in my life. But I do it. I do it as a community service, and I do it to help because I don't want people to go through the same bullshit that I went through when I came here. I went through a, I went through Airbnb hell, and you cannot pay me enough money to ever stay in another Airbnb. I'll spend twice as much money for a hotel room before I stay in any cotton picking Airbnb. So during our discussions with this realtor, she told me that she does background checks on her potential clients. And I took issue with that. In the first place, I don't see a reason for any realtor or landlord here. I don't see any reason for anybody to run a background check on an expat coming from North America or Australia or Europe anywhere. I don't see the need for it. You know? As a matter of fact, it's, it's kind of an insult to my intelligence. Now, granted, every barrel has a bad apple in it, and one will slip through the cracks. And there, you know, you can get bad people here, I assure you. You know, the, she, she made reference to a couple of pedophiles that were arrested in Coinca, and, you know, had somebody run a background check well, I don't know, you know, is there a background check that would say, hey, these guys are pedophiles, don't rent to them. I know this, it costs money to run background checks, and I don't think any Ecuadorian landlord is going to want to spend money to run a background check, you know. My recommendation to you coming here to stay here, if you're going to stay here on a short-term rental or even a, a long-term rental, and a realtor tells you that they're going to run a background check on you, I think I'd be talking to another realtor. Okay? That's just my own personal opinion. I don't, I don't see the sense in it. I know she's not going to agree with me, but, hell, we've already had some disagreements, and so why not have a third one, you know, or a fourth or fifth one? But, you know, not everybody has to like me. That's, why do you think they call me grumpy old gringo? Anyway, I've talked to a couple of other realtors, prominent realtors in this area. They say they never run background checks on anybody. I say if you're going to run background checks on anybody in this country, we should run them on the landlords. There is story after story of landlords here keeping deposits for no reason at all. There's story after story of landlords here overcharging for deposits. There's story after story of landlords here making you responsible for their crappy appliances and their crappy furniture that they have in their apartments here on the coast. You should not be responsible if you sit down on a couch and you cushion takes you all the way to the floor because the springs broke loose or whatever. That's not your fault. You know, it shouldn't be. I'll give you a good example. When I moved into my apartment down below the one I'm in right now, the very first week I was in there, I had to go buy a $5 jug of water, a five-gallon jug of water. It was only $2. I took the lid off of it, turned it upside down, put it on the dispenser sitting on the counter, and it was heavy. It was said, I'm, a, oh, I'm not a heavyweight, you know, I'm power liquor. I, I had to struggle to get that thing up there and get it on this dispenser. And when I set it in the dispenser, the dispenser cracked in two and split open. Water bottle fell, I got water everywhere, hurt my back, it made a mess. Guess what, folks? I had to pay for that freaking water dispenser. My landlord, my rental agent, who I'm not going to mention, insisted that I replace that water dispenser. And so, or it said it would be taken out of my deposit. 
after I ever did, I replaced it. And of course, when I left, I did get my deposit back. There was no question about that. But that's something that, you know, you might have to look forward to when you come here. My, my opinion, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, before you come here and start looking for a rental agent, give me a call, okay? I'll put you in touch with our Facebook groups, and you can get on there. I'll let you join, okay? And you can start asking questions, and we'll hook you up with the right people, okay? We all know who these landlords are, and we're going to make sure that you don't get hooked up with the wrong one. The worst thing that you can do when you come to Monta and looking for a rental is to get in a taxi and drive around town and look for the rent signs. That's the worst thing you can do. Don't do it. Hire an agent. Pay the small change that you got to pay for the agent to take you to reputable places where you can stay and be safe and you won't get gals out of ass for deposits and having to buy uh, appliances and stuff that you're not responsible for. I got another email from a, another viewer this morning. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about, and then I'll sh shut up, okay? What a nice surprise to hear from you so soon. And by, by the way, I'm going to keep the name uh, anonymous here, okay? Thank you for the advice on where not to go. Fortunately, we had not planned to visit those places and have centered attention on Cuenca and a few other places we have seen on YouTube and researched online. They had asked me previously a few days ago uh, where, you know, where to, where to go. I said, I told them, I said, Quito, Cuenca, Monta, so you, you can feel relatively safe in these areas, and there's some other coastal areas around here. Stay away from Esmeralda, stay away from Guayaquil, stay away from... Um, Salinas, stay away from that general area up there and you'll be okay. They listen to me and they're going to settle, they, they, I think they're going to settle on Cuenca. His next paragraph, he said, what concerns us most is the altitude. My wife, being a stubborn lifetime smoker, may have issues with location, but we have been told that over time you acclimate to it. Did you visit the mountain towns when researching? Yes. I was a near lifetime smoker. I smoked for 32 years. I quit in 2000. I've been diagnosed with having COPD. I have chronic coughs. I have chronic bronchitis. I have chronic breathing problems. I'm 72 years old and you know I'll probably die <clears throat> from this uh, having been a cigarette smoker unless some woman kills me. Um, there, uh, I stayed, I spent a, a month in Cuenca uh, two years ago. The month of middle of January to middle of February. The third night that I was there, I had to call 911 and get assistance because of, I was so sure I had COVID. And it come to find out that I didn't have COVID. They wouldn't even take me to the hospital to see if I did have COVID. They said I didn't have the symptoms of it, but I did have the symptoms of altitude sickness. So they suggested that I get a good night of sleep, drink lots of water, take something for the headaches, and go to the hospital the next morning and get tested for COVID, which is what I did. I was in the crank of the whole month. I never got used to the altitude. I, I had a tough time. What was amazing to me was that I could go walking around town and not have any issues with breathing. It seemed to me like the time I had the worst problem with breathing was when I got up in the mornings. Uh, I'd get up, I'd shower, and I'd have to sit on the edge of my bed and catch my breath uh, just so I could, you know, breathe comfortably. Maybe you can get used to it. I would definitely consult with a doctor before you, uh, well, no, I I don't say you need to do it before you go there, but when you get there, find a doctor and go make an appointment. You can, a doctor in Quinko will do a house call for 40 bucks. It's well worth it. And, and having talked to, you know, the doctor about your, your wife and about your breathing problems. We also have contacted a couple insurance brokers looking to research 
medical care. You noted in your video that you had changed and saved money in your recoveries. What he's talking about is I dropped ISS and went to a private. I saved $4 a month uh, by having private insurance. I went from ES to Sweden. ES was $71 a month. Sweden is uh, $68. 68 to 971. $3. I say $3. Never have been much of a mathematician. But anyway, three bucks. Yeah, it's three, you know, that's $36 a year. That'd buy several six packs of beer, several bottles of wine. But, you know, did you research yourself or did you have an agent? You know, you know what? They, there's some there's the stuff you can buy for that belt, you moron. You know, you take all that squeak out. Why don't you just drive around the city with a squeaky belt? There you go. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Start it back up. Sorry about that. I'm just giving some instruction, okay? Yeah, thank you. How can somebody drive a car around with a belt squealing like that? It's, folks, it's simple stuff. You got a loose belt. Fix it. Go to the, if you can pay to put gas in your car... You can go to the shop and have a put a new belt on, okay? All right, so anyway, back on, you know me, this is, the, welcome to the Don Shader shit show. All right, did I research her or did I have an agent? I have an agent, Blue Box Insurance. I've always talked about Blue Box Insurance. I always will talk about Blue Box Insurance. Uh, Carlos and Steph are the best. They're here in Monta, they're in Quito, they're in Cuenca. They're, they're all over, they're in every major city in the country. I'll put a link to Blue Box Insurance in the description. That should settle that. Just talk to them. Talk to Stephanie. Tell them exactly what your situation is and they will set you straight. Okay? I tell some people you don't need ISS and some people you do. ISS is the Social Security system here. They have uh, government provided insurance. You pay for it. You pay for ISS for 10 years here and you get to retire. And you get a retirement check from them. Okay? And you get free insurance for the rest of your life. So come here and stay here 10 years, all right? But go to Blue Box. Talk to the guys at Blue Box. Okay? Simple as that. I'll put the number here. Here's the number right here. Okay? Right there. Call Stephanie, S-T-E-F-A-N-Y, and start with her. And she will get you headed in the right direction. We are concerned with things like insulin. The wife has type 2 diabetes. Folks, there are thousands of people in this country with diabetes. Thousands. Okay? There is plenty, ample medication for diabetes. Put that to rest. Don't worry about that anymore, okay? Uh, we're, we're seeing the crap doctors here just throw medication at us. Well, that's not going to happen here. Okay? You're, you're, they're not going to throw crap medicine at you. You know? If anything... Well, they might over-medicate you, but, you know, you, you talk to the doctor, okay? That's, a, that's, the thing, that's the difference between here and the United States. Hell, you can't hardly talk to your doctor. You know, here, you call a doctor, you don't have to call him. You write to him on WhatsApp and say, Doctor, I need your help. They'll come to you, you know? Here in Monta, a house calls like 60 bucks. An office visit's 40 you know? Dr. Garcia, I don't know if she has an office, but I know she... she she comes to you, and she's charged us sixty dollars, and she does a very thorough job. Okay, Dr. Gladys Garcia. I'll put her link in the description. I've done several interviews with her. We do not think we want to live oceanfront. We are more of a visit the coast than type than live there kind of people. The draw to Cuenca is the location, the access to just about anything culturally interesting. The color. Cooler temperature as well as the views and just all around better life doing nothing we don't want to have to do. It's like we are after 8 p.m. people anymore. There are other reasons, but that's good enough for now. Okay, well, I don't know why I just read that paragraph. Thank you for the videos. We're learning all we can from our living room before we step into the unknown. We are working on learning the language and trying to familiarize ourselves with places and activities, transportation choices, and so on, and we hope to avoid some of the newbie pitfalls. The best way to avoid these newbie pitfalls is to don't wait until you get here. 
But now, go to Facebook, get on the Facebook Monte and Monte B Expats and Amigos group page, join, answer the membership question, check the box that you agree to the group rules, and you'll automatically be a member. We have 7,800 members, okay? And start asking questions. There's no reason for anybody to come here with their head in a fog and trying to figure out how do we do this, where do we go for that, and so forth, okay? You can always contact me, and if I can't help you, I'll put somebody in touch with you that can, okay? But anyway, so that's it from them. I think that's it for this video. Uh, I'm going to start working on some more interviews. I'm going to do some more podcasts. I know I kind of got a feeling that people aren't real crazy about podcasts, but, you know, I'm just trying to spread as much information as I can. And there goes our power generator. Did the power just go off? We just lost our power. This is two days in a row that I've lost my power here. I can see the lights are off. But you know what? The show still goes on. I'm all battery powered. Anyway, one more thing I want to say before I go. Don't let the news stories that you hear about violence here stop you from coming here, folks. If you don't plan to come here and get involved in drugs and the cartel, you have really nothing to worry about. Stay away from the bad neighborhoods. Get here, meet with the expats, talk to me, talk to Stella, talk to Ryan Kelly, talk to Martin, talk to Blue Box Insurance, talk to Dr. Garcia, Dr. Rose Rodal. Let us put you in touch with the right people and let us help you get in the right places to stay. Okay? It's not that bad. Yeah, there was a shooting here three months ago, but hell, that could happen anytime, anywhere, okay? It wasn't a shooting at me, so I'm not going to complain, okay? That's it. See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.